Hello, my name is Holden Hardman, and this is the History of Pensacola Part 5. Unlike Parts 1 through 4, this video will not be comparing pictures taken over 100 years ago to today. Instead, I wanted to talk about a lesser-known story that took place here in 1844. This is the story of Jonathan Walker. Born in Harwich, Massachusetts, Jonathan learned at a very early age how to sail. It was his passion. He was an abolitionist from the North who came to Florida in 1837 to become a railroad contractor. Slavery always fascinated him, both in its ideology and in its practice. He was known to our city as being a friend of black people. This was a problem for both the citizens and the elected officials of the time. So much so, they threatened his very life for his mere association with black men. I have lived five or six years with my family in Pensacola, Florida being known by the people to be generally hostile to the system of slavery. Twice, while living there, I was called upon by different persons, the chief executive officers or mayors for the time being, in consequence of the report and circulation that I was on good terms with the colored people. And it was intimated that there was danger in regard to my peace and safety, for should the people be excited in consequence of my discountenance, of some of their rules and customs respecting the association of white with colored men. It would be out of their power to shield me from violence. In June of 1844, he set sail for Pensacola in a boat he personally owned. It was at this time he spoke with three or four black men in secret. It should be noted that in his recollection of this, he writes he had an interview with three or four persons, not specifying their race and referring to them as people. The men were desperate to leave their slaveholders. Jonathan told them explicitly that if they chose to go to the Bahama Islands in his boat, he would share the risk with them. They prepared, and by the 22nd, seven slaves total joined Jonathan on his boat. He chronicles their voyage in his writing, talking about the harsh conditions and how he became very sick aboard. He was so ill, the ship had to be manned and cared for by the other men. Weeks went by when a large vessel approached them asking where they were going. They quickly discovered Jonathan was smuggling them out of Florida. We were then 40 or 50 miles from Cape Florida, and if had not been detained, would have got there before night and been ready to cross the gulf the next morning. But our voyage was up, and we had other prospects before us. He was imprisoned and handcuffed. He talks to the mosquitoes that he could not fend off with his hands bound behind him. He was summoned to return to Pensacola, Florida. All items found on his boat would be forfeited. He inquired to the sheriff of Pensacola regarding his few possessions. I subsequently wrote twice to the sheriff, but received no answer. They were of no great value, but to one in my circumstances, it was a good deal. The seven men were returned to Pensacola. Jonathan was placed in double irons, still suffering from the sickness he experienced aboard his boat. The men who had tried to escape were tortured, paddle whipped. Jonathan was put on trial in federal court and found guilty. His punishment was to have his hand branded with an SS, which meant slave stealer. A unique request of this kind required a brand to be crafted. The first blacksmith approached by authorities refused to make a brand, stating brand should only be used on animals. The second blacksmith agreed but stated that they would not heat the brand in his furnace. The marshal proceeded to tie my hand to the railing in front of me. I remarked that there was no need of tying it or I would hold still. He tied it regardless and firmly to the post. He took from the fire the branding iron of slight red heat and applied it to the ball of my hand and pressed on it firmly for 15 to 20 seconds. It made a spattering noise, like a handful of salt and fire as the skin seared and gave way to the hot iron. He remained in prison for another 11 months until a group of abolitionists from the North paid his bail and freedom. His total accrued debt reached over $100,000. Word had spread of Walker and his attempt to free seven slaves. His brand would become known as Slave Savior. Walker would spend another five years lecturing of the evils of slavery across the country. I have no ill will to slaveholders or the advocates of slavery, but I pity them for their awful depravity in regarding as property those who are, by rule of right, and the laws of God, entitled to the same privileges and benefits as themselves. 
It is the system of slavery that sheds itself mildew upon the fair prospects of our country, blasting its social, political, moral, and religious prosperity, which I unhesitantly contend against. Thank you so much for watching The History of Pensacola Part 5. Make sure you check out Parts 1 through 4 as well. As always, I appreciate you watching, and I'll catch you in my next video.